We're bringing the garden to the grill coming up next. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to the Garden to Table. Today, we're in Eastern Oklahoma with my great friend, Heidi Berry and her family. And what's great about it is Heidi's hosting one of her legendary cookouts right here at her home. What makes it even better is she's bringing some of their homegrown vegetables grown right here by her and her children to the grill this evening. But first, we wanna focus on what we're gonna cover in today's show. We're going to be making some traditional and not so traditional grilling recipes, including these pizzas top them any way you like them, but I have a few suggestions that you might want to try. Plus, how to make these herb bundles that are certain to heighten the flavors of your next grilling endeavor. And an outdoor tablescape for all the neighbors that are going to want to stop by the next time they smell your grill being fired up. Well, we've got a fun and inspiring show ahead of us, and we're going to start right here with my friend Heidi. Heidi, thanks so much for having us here. Well, you're welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. Well, finally, I love this place, and here we are. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's so beautiful. Tell me a little bit about the vegetables and what's going on here. Absolutely. We've got some great-looking squash and zucchini, as well as some new potatoes, a little bit of thyme, all of which I'm proud to say came from our family garden. That, that is amazing. Is this the first year you all have put in a big garden? It is. I've, I'm a city girl, as you may recall. I've only had a raised bed garden in the past. And we have a great piece of property and we decided to start a small garden and it's really become a wonderful hobby and activity for all of so us. So is this your first year to actually grow potatoes? It is. Well, those are beautiful. What variety is that? That's a new potato. They're, they're incredible. So we've got peppers, we have squash, we have potatoes and zucchini. And these zucchini over here are from the garden. Right, right. Those are some big guys. <laughs> yes, those are what we call quality control zucchini. A little mishap there, but they still look nice. Well, they're, they're beautiful to have out here. Gosh, they're amazing in, their, in terms of their size. So give me an idea of what we're cooking on here because this is the first time I've seen this. Okay, this is called an entertaining grill as opposed to your traditional grill where the chef is always facing his audience, this allows everyone to gather around and cook and, and visit at the same time. Two people can have a conversation. Exactly. Yeah, I like it, I like it. Tell me what, what really inspired you to say, this year we're gonna plant a garden. For me, it was the mom factor and wanting my children to eat healthier. And I, I really believe in the concept of engaging them and letting them see their own food grow and harvesting it. It's almost like a treasure hunt. Whenever we get to the garden each each evening, we look forward to it. We look forward to what's grown and, and it's from our garden. And there's just such a sense of pride about that. Sure, oh yeah, totally. And and from from start to harvest, from the planting to harvest, you all have been going up there virtually every day. We have, we have. And as a matter of fact, my uh, husband and I have have taken our friends for tours. It's become quite a <laughs> recreational hobby. The center point. It has. I, I guess you know you're getting old when your gardening is your is your joy and your hobby and highlight. But it has been really fun, and we're able to do it together. And it's not it's not drudgery. It's not oh come on. It, everybody's excited about it. And like I said, it's just it's just something really cool about knowing that you grew that. And, the, and, and also the sharing. I shouldn't just say that. It's been really fun to load it up. Um, we, have, we have kind of an AT vehicle and we load it up in baskets and we share it with our friends and neighbors. Well, speaking of friends and neighbors and sharing, I tell you, I love this drink. Are you ready for a little more? I would love some more. I want you to share this recipe. It's so to. refreshing. Thank you. It is a great summer drink. And it, as you can see, mint from the garden. Mm -hmm. This is a raspberry infused iced tea. Uh, you take fresh raspberries. Uh, sugar, of course, mint from the garden. You want to muddle that together with a pinch of baking soda. To retain, baking soda? Yes, to retain the beautiful red color. Now, how much sugar did you use? One cup. One, One cup, cup of, of sugar, sugar. How many berries? About three cups of fresh raspberries. And then just a handful of mint. It's no, no real measurement there. Yeah, just it just depends on how much you like mint. That's right, how minty <laughs> you are. But yes, you're gonna add your raspberries, your mint, and your sugar, a little baking soda, keep the color as we talked about. You muddle that together, 
And then you want to take uh, four cups of water, boil that, add two family-sized tea bags, let that seep, and then let that cool. Let the tea cool, and then you want to infuse that into your, your berry and your mint mixture. You want to let that sit for about an hour, okay? Then we're going to put that through a strainer. Push it through a strainer real good, get all that wonderful berry flavor and mint flavor out. And then you're going to return the liquid mixture and the tea back to a pitcher and add four cups of cold water, pour it over ice, and enjoy. It is fantastic. And another fun thing I've found, this makes a great foundation for a mixer with your favorite adult beverage. You can do equal parts with lemonade. Lemonade, yeah. So it's a very refreshing and fun summer beverage. Well, cheers to your garden. Well, cheers to you. Thank very you. Very good. Thank you so much for having us. Well, you're welcome, and thank you for helping inspire us. One of the great joys of summer is grilling outside and I have to say I love the abundance of herbs that come from the garden this time of year. I learned over the years that by creating herb bundles and wrapping them up and soaking them in water is a great way to add flavor to your grilling. It's really simple to do. All you do is create bundles of herbs that you want to use such as rosemary, thyme, oregano. You see it's easier to use herbs with a woody stem. They're much sturdier. You see, I like to use a piece from the herb bundle, probably one of the more tender stems to tie the bundle together. And then what I like to do is soak them in water. You see, what this does is keeps them from burning up so quickly and they create a delicious flavored smoke. Now, if you love the flavor of grilled food, make sure you give this tip a try. You're gonna really enjoy it. You know, being successful with anything really is about understanding some basic principles. And hey, that even goes with grilling. You know, you gotta really understand the cuts of meat that you're actually taking out and putting on the grill. Brandon Brown with Hillcrest Artisan Meats is a guy who understands these cuts and he's got some tips for us that can really come in handy the next time we fire up the grill. I've been working in kitchens pretty much my whole life since I was about 16. You know, started out as a dishwasher and I've been cooking um, my whole life. We've always kind of wanted to do something on our own, our family, uh, have a little family business. You know, I've worked for people my whole life. We moved here just to relocate for a change and, you know, found that there's nothing like this going on here. Um, all the meat we offer here at uh, Hillcrest Austin Meats are all sourced local. Um, we deal with four very small uh, family operated farms and we just think it's really, really important for people to get back to knowing where their food comes from rather than just going and buying a piece of meat out of the, out of the deli case at the, at the grocery store. So educating people on that is a really important part of this business. Um, eating local, supporting your local small farms. As far as grilling beef goes, I mean, everybody knows about uh, hamburgers, ground chuck. We all love hamburgers. It's probably the most common thing that people cook on the grill. And then you can go down the line to, uh, you know, beef tenderloin is great. Uh, just a little salt and pepper, quick sear. We like it medium rare at our place. There's the top sirloin. Everybody seems to like that one a lot too. As far as tenderness compared to the beef tenderloin, uh, I'd say your next step is going to the, uh, the beef ribeye bone in or bone out. The bone in, you know, is going to obviously take a lot more time on the grill. Uh, New York strips, not quite as tender as the tenderloin or the ribeye, but uh, again, another great cut of meat. And then you can get into more obscure cuts. There's the hanger steak, also known as the butcher steak. Uh, the butcher used to take the uh, hanger steak and they would keep it for themselves. And it's a great cut, uh, very beefy in flavor. Uh, there's the flat iron steak which um, is, again, a really tender cut of meat, pretty close to the, uh, 
the tenderloin and the ribeye. And then you can get into the whole muscle meat, such as uh, tri-tips, which grill up great, marinate or dry rub on those is perfect. Uh, you can take whole ribeyes and grill whole ribeyes. Uh, you can grill whole strip loins and then you know you can cut those steaks into as thin or thick steaks as you want. You can chill them and you could use them to make great for roast beef sandwiches the next day for any leftovers. My personal favorite way is just a little bit of salt and pepper. You know, I don't want to mask the flavor of the beef, but the tri-tip is great with marinade or a rub. The uh, whole muscles, you can do the same way. The important thing to remember when you're grilling meat is uh, to always remove it from the refrigerator at least a half an hour before you throw it on the grill. That way you're not grilling a cold piece of meat, which is going to take a long time for the heat to penetrate. If you want a medium rare steak, take your steak off when it's rare or a little bit before medium rare and let it sit and rest about five or ten minutes. It's going to let the meat keep cooking a little bit and it's going to let the juices come back together in the meat. You're going to have a really nice juicy piece of meat rather than all that juice running out all over your cutting board. <laughs> Pork and beef are a lot different. Uh, pork tends to be a little bit uh, tougher, and so it's real important when you're doing uh, any kind of cut of pork is uh, a brine. A brine is basically salt water, and you can add any adjuncts that you want. Uh, fresh herbs are great. Garlic is always uh, great. Basically, any cut of pork that you're gonna throw on the grill, it's great to throw in a brine. Let it sit for at least an hour. Uh, in the fridge or out of the fridge is fine. Pork tenderloin, really tender cut. Uh, takes marinade, grow up really, really well, uh, and dry rubs too. That everybody knows about bone-in or boneless pork chops. Again, brine is very important on those as well. They can be uh, they can be tough and they can be easier to really easy to overcook. If you brine your pork chops or any cut of pork, you're going to have a hard time to overcook it. Pork belly, pork bellies are great. Everybody knows them for bacon. But if you throw a pork belly on a grill and just do it nice and slow and low for uh, a long time, it's going to that fat's going to melt. The meat's going to be uh, tender and uh, it's a great cut of meat to do on the grill. Just remember, it's got a lot of fat. It's gonna take a long time to break that fat down. Pig jowls, you can treat those just like uh, you know the pork belly. Jowl meat is unbelievably tender if you cook it right. Pork shoulder, you know, that's kind of a tricky one on the grill. It's a big cut of meat, we usually roast that. Um, you can do ham on the grill. If you want to grill a whole ham, it's gonna take a really long time, kind of like the uh, pork belly. You're gonna want to do it really slow. Ham steaks are great on the grill, you know, and you can uh, get some sugars on them, some brown sugar, molasses. It'll make a, a nice caramelized ham steak on, on the grill. And same thing with the pork. Always have your pork at room temperature uh, before you throw it on. Super important. And always let your pork sit for 10, 5, 10 minutes before you cut into a off the grill. I'm um, start off with salt, uh, helps tenderize a little bit uh, and you know definitely is going to be a flavor enhancer. Uh, next we'll do pepper, coarse ground, it's going to uh, you know add a little bit of a bite to our rub and without it it just is not going to be the same. Uh, next we have the, uh, the garlic salt, uh, if we throw whole garlic in there the garlic will tend to burn as it's uh, charring and we, uh, we, uh, we definitely need that garlic flavor for this particular rub. Next we have the ancho chili powder. Um, it's gonna add a little bit of heat and definitely a little bit of a smoky flavor. And the last one, the main ingredient of this rub is the cumin. Um, a real uh, original flavor. Definitely toast your cumin seeds before you grind them. Uh, it'll definitely bring out uh, a lot more of the flavor of the seed. Make sure all your ingredients for your rub are thoroughly mixed. Start generously applying it to the tri-tip. If you don't use it all, you can always save it for next time in a sealed container. Uh, this is a great rub for pretty much any cut of beef. Generally apply to both sides, shaking off any excess. Make sure to get all the sides. So after you get your, uh, you know, your rub on there generously and you get it pressed in there, leave your meat out for 20 minutes, half an hour, get your, make sure your grill's nice and hot. What you're gonna do, you wanna sear it for five or 10 minutes on both sides to sear in all the, uh, the spices on this rub. It'll, uh, it'll char, it'll smoke a lot, but that's what you're looking for. Uh, 10 minutes each side, 
uh, pull it off to a cold side of the grill, uh, cooler side of the grill, turn your grill down if you got gas, uh, colder side on the uh, charcoal, and you're gonna wanna let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes each side, turning it only one time. Don't sit there and flip it back and forth, back and forth. You wanna just let it sit 15 to 20 minutes each side for a nice medium rare tri-tip. Pull it off the grill, let it sit for five or 10 minutes, and slice into uh, whatever size slices you want, thin or thick, and that's the cumin crusted tri-tip. For those of us who've gardened for years and those who are coming on board and beginning to grow some of their own food, we're always looking for things that will perform in the really hot dog days of summer. One of the best examples is right here, it's eggplant. And this variety of eggplant that I'm looking at here, you can see in the basket, it's one called Hansel and Gretel. The purple ones are called Hansel and the white ones are called Gretel. You may say, well, big deal. Well, let me tell you, it's all about the volume, the yield that these plants produce. It's really quite phenomenal. I have to stay out here and on them all the time to make sure that I'm harvesting them young enough before they get too old. You see, I like to use them in ways like, well, simply smoking or grilling them. I also like them in dishes like baba ganoush and ratatouille. And they're great in so many different types of vegetarian recipes. Now, to grow eggplant, you wanna make sure that you have well-drained soil, plenty of sun, I fertilize with an organic fertilizer, and as they grow, you wanna make sure that you're harvesting on a regular basis. And I like to use these pruners because I don't like to tear the stems of the plant. You wanna keep that plant in top health because they will produce for a long time. What's amazing is once you plant the plants, you'll find that they begin producing after 60 days. Also, something to point out, they produce this beautiful purple flower with a yellow center. They're a joy to have around. And the other thing to think about is to grow them in containers. If you don't have a lot of space, it's the perfect way to have some of your own homegrown eggplant. I just want to take a moment and show you this outdoor tablescape. It follows a very simple theme. The color, of course, is green. And what I've done here is I've just taken some gourds that we have growing here on the farm and piled them up in the center. They're bold, they're beautiful, and very green. The table is set for six, and I've used these rustic placemats and uh, a green plate, and the tableware, I placed it on a napkin at each of the place settings. The proximity of this table to the grill and to the summer kitchen make it really handy. And there's always a nice breeze out here in every season. Now that brings me to the season. There's always something in the garden, and I like to use vegetables and things like that in the middle of the table as opposed to 
cut flowers because the cut flowers don't last that long out in the full sun. I reserve cut flowers for days when it's going to be shady or if I'm doing an event out here in the evening. If you love pizza, you're going to love this way of going about making it. I love to grill it on the grill. It's a perfect way to add a little zest to your summer grilling. What I'm starting out with are some pieces of pizza dough. You can make it yourself or you can pick some up at your local grocery store, your favorite pizza place. I'm just gonna take a little olive oil and I'm gonna brush it onto these before I throw the pizza dough onto the grill. Throw that down here and then one here and one back there. And I'm just gonna brush on a little oil on this side as well. It only takes a minute. You wanna grill the pizza crust for one minute. If it's really thin, maybe it won't take that long. You're gonna put this back on the oven once we get them all decked out with lots of toppings and flavors. Okay, so I've turned the grill down to low because we've cooked the pizza dough. What I'm gonna do is do this one, which is basically a cheese and meat pizza. I've taken these caramelized onions. I'm just gonna place them here on the bread. A little blue cheese, maybe a lot of blue cheese. A lot of blue cheese, here we go. Well, yummy for blue cheese lovers, you're gonna love that. And then here's some steak strips, the meat lover in the family. I'm just gonna kinda line those along here. A lot of this you can prepare ahead of time. All right, so there's that one, you get the idea. Now I'm gonna do the garden, which is goat cheese. So lots of goat cheese along the top here like this. And then I've been roasting some of these vegetables. What I did with the vegetables is I grilled them. I applied some olive oil to them first. As you can see, they're in thin strips. I have zucchini. I'll layer some zucchini here. It's so good when it's grilled and some eggplant and also some fennel, all in fresh and right out of the garden. Well, except for the mushrooms. Okay, now the next one we're gonna do is the classic, which requires a classic pizza sauce made with tomatoes. This is really easy to do. It's a recipe anyone could make. You wanna start by taking two tablespoons of olive oil and a half a cup of chopped onion and one garlic clove that's minced. And you wanna saute the onion and the garlic and the olive oil until the onions are clear. And then just add six plum tomatoes after you've peeled and minced them. I love Roma, we grow those here. And then a six ounce can of tomato paste, followed by two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese, a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I like to throw in one small bay leaf and one teaspoon of fennel seed. Then you want this to cook for about 30 to 40 minutes on medium heat, and it's gonna cook down to look like this, a beautiful tomato sauce. And what I wanna do is just apply this to the bread. About like this. Get creative. All sorts of things you can put on here. Um, I have some Italian sausage. and some pepperoni, love of the pepperoni. And then we're gonna finish it off with some mozzarella. This one's really good. Okay, now they're ready to throw on the grill. I'm just gonna add a little cracked pepper. And they just need to stay on the grill long enough for the cheese to melt. To help facilitate that, I'm just gonna take some aluminum foil and create a little tent. The heat will build up under it and melt the cheese and they're ready to eat. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I hope you've picked up a few tips that will help you with some of your grilling endeavors. Until next time, good eating and good health.